Uh, in this video, I want to go over the requirements for project three, the annotated bibliography. Um, and I want to give you a sense of how this project fits into the remainder of the class. Uh, the second half of our term together will be focused on research, um, specifically research in non-scholarly sources. So the internet at large, um, and some, some general databases that contain magazines and newspapers and things like that. Um, hopefully this will be really useful for you uh, as you move on into other classes that you're taking uh, or will take in the future, um, because uh, I want to make sure that we're sort of all um, capable of figuring out what's useful on the internet and what's less useful on the internet uh, for um, different purposes. Okay. So uh, I want to go over project three, um, but I also want to give you a sense of where we are in the overall structure of the term. So the third project is going to be an annotated bibliography, and I want to talk about that in just a sec. But first, where are we in the class? So we finished this the uh, couple um, big projects already. We finished the rhetorical analysis essay, and we've also finished the strong response essay. Up next uh, is the research portion of our class. There are going to be two more major projects and a presentation. Um, all of these remaining assignments are going to be based in your own research, and they're going to be interrelated. So think about the rest of this term as focused on the research process and one sort of large project that you're going to be working on with multiple parts. Um, so project three is an annotated bibliography, uh, and that's going to have four sources. Um, one of them is drawn from class readings. Um, so that means one source from class readings, at, that's a starting point for your narrow topic, and three new sources that you'll find through your own research. Uh, so that's project three. And project four is an argumentative, thesis-driven research essay on the narrow topic that you developed in the annotated bibliography. So you're doing the research and for your, your project first, and then you're writing your project. Um, and you're gonna be drawing on the research that you've done earlier. Uh, and then after all of that, you're gonna be creating a video presentation of your research. Uh, and that is something that all of your peers will watch. And uh, hopefully it will be an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, creating videos uh, that, you know, are useful for class projects as well. So that's where we are in the class and where we're going. Uh, project three, right? What is the goal of this annotated bibliography, which you've probably done in the past before. You've probably done an annotated bibliography assignment in the past. Um, but, uh, and, you know, a lot of times people think that they're pointless, they're just not very helpful, just busy work, okay? So what's the goal? <laughs> uh, well, the primary goal is for you to become a mini expert in a narrowed topic, okay? Um, for you to really get a sense of how to identify strong materials on the internet, in magazines, in more popular sources, like those which you encounter on a daily basis when you're surfing the internet. Okay? Um, so how to distinguish among um, reputable sources, not reputable sources, quality sources, um, suspect sources, sources that are useful for this purpose and uh, as opposed to some other purpose. Okay? So you're gonna be um, doing this by researching and then writing an annotated bibliography. And like I said, that annotated bib will have three new high quality popular sources on a topic that's related to our class readings. Um, and you will have narrowed that topic uh, in both focus and scope. Okay. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later in this video. You're also gonna be incorporating one of the essays we've read in class already. So that will be a total of four uh, bibliographic entries and four annotations um, in your annotated bib. So your sources for this project can be magazines, really robust news investigation videos, um, newspaper articles, nonprofit reports, government reports, book, even book chapters, and so on. Um, the only real sort of requirement here is that they have to be good sources, okay? And they cannot be scholarly journal articles. That's for EN 102, and that's for the next part of our uh, composition sequence, okay? 
So what you're going to be doing is um, first identifying the essay that you were most intrigued by um, in uh, our reading, our prior reading for this class. It might be the essay that you feel gave you the most background information or something else that drew you to it or that you think is going to be helpful for you sort of as a, a starting place. Uh, then you're going to research and learn more uh, about um, your, that topic that you've sort of chosen. You're going to work on narrowing that topic into a really focused research question. Okay? Um, at first, you're going to find five new sources. Okay? Um, we're going to narrow that down to the three new sources uh, that you're going to incorporate into your annotated bib. Okay? Um, one thing to keep in mind is that in EN 101, we're really focused on popular source materials rather than scholarly source materials. That's for EN 102, as I mentioned earlier. Now, when I say popular source material, sometimes people don't quite know what that means. They hear popular and they think, oh, you know, stuff that I find on Facebook or, you know, stuff that I might find if I'm, you know, looking for the best computer to purchase. Um, popular things, right? Easy to access things, really understandable things, right? Stuff that I like and I know about, right? That's not quite what I mean when I say popular source materials rather than scholarly source materials, okay? Um, your research should be drawn from the kinds of sources that we've seen already in our class, all right? Um, so the readings that I've given you already, for the most part, are really good examples of popular source materials. So part of the challenge um, for this project is for you to learn how to identify quality sources on the internet. Okay? So after you've um, researched, you've learned a little bit more, you've narrowed down your topic, you've got a research question, okay? you're going to further narrow down the five sources that you found to three sources that are the best sources, they're really strongly related, okay? and those are the ones that you're going to include in your annotated bib. Right, along with the, the article that you know, I've given you that you've chosen from this class. Um, and then the last step really is to reread, to annotate, to really understand your source materials, to draft and revise your annotated bibliography. Okay. So this is what an annotated bibliography looks like. Um, like I said, you may have encountered this before, uh, and different professors will want your annotated bibliography to look to do different things, okay? So not every annotated bibliography is sort of the same, right? <laughs> for this class, I am looking for an annotated bibliography that will look something like this, right? Both in form and in terms of content, okay? So just a little bit of information about um, what, this, what you're seeing here on this annotated bib. Um, page one, okay, has a title, annotated bibliography colon, writing to learn. And that's, let's say, my the, the topic that I'm working on, that I'm researching. Okay? Now, this annotated bib only has two sources in it. Okay, This is just a sample for you to sort of see what I'm looking for. Um, you'll notice that uh, each annotation has two parts. There's a bibliographic component to it, um, which is the sort of top part, the, the hanging indented top part, Downs, Douglas, and Elizabeth Wardle, teaching about writing, writing misconceptions, et cetera. It will look like a works cited entry or bibliography entry, okay? A reference, um, a bibliographic entry. And then the second one is an article by Jeffrey Salingo called Why Can't College Graduates Write Coherent Prose from the Washington Post, okay? So I have um, bibliographic entries, and then I have annotations beneath that, okay? And you'll notice that these annotations are two paragraphs long, okay? Uh, the first paragraph contains a summary, right? Now, I could be a little bit more, um, you know, brief in my summary, but you'll notice that this paragraph of summary also includes some rhetorical analysis, okay? So uh, the first paragraph should be summary and sort of rhetorical analysis, a bit of understanding. I want you to understand the context. What is this thing that you're reading? Um, how is it written? What's really strong about how it's been presented? Um, you know, what are, what's the rhetorical context of this piece, okay? So paragraph one, summary and rhetorical context. Okay? Paragraph two is a sense of how you are going to be using this. What is it that really draws your attention uh, about this article? Um, and really explicitly, how might you use it in your essay, 
right? And when I say this, what I mean is, you know, it can be both broad in terms of sort of ideas that you're interested in, but also really specific, right? Maybe you want to use this in um, the section of your essay that has some background information, okay? <laughs> or maybe you want to use this, um, you know, a particular portion of this essay, like the larger argumentative goals, and maybe um, a couple particular examples at different places in your essay, maybe in the conclusion to sort of suggest, so what? And uh, maybe about halfway through when you're sort of making a transition or you're thinking about how to connect some ideas, okay? Those are just some examples. Um, I'll give you this uh, sample annotated bibliography um, so that we can look at it in a little bit more depth, but I just wanted to give you a sense of what this looks like. You'll notice that in the upper uh, left-hand corner, you have um, the sort of header information with your name and the class and date, et cetera. And there is, um, your last name and page number in uh, the top uh, right hand corner of the page. So just something to keep in mind, all right? We'll go in more depth about this and I will give you an annotated version of this, like I said, on Canvas, so you can look at it more closely. So we're going to get into the details of research a little bit later, uh, but for now, uh, let's just think about how to narrow a topic, okay? how to focus a topic so that you have, you know, a really good sense of what you're going to be interested in, what you're going to be researching, and also, um, you know, what I'm looking for. So narrowing your topic, how do you narrow a topic? Well, this course is sort of in general, right, about um, Black Lives Matter, okay? the movement um, that really came to uh, national consciousness in uh, 2020 and earlier, but it sort of really came to people's attention, right, um, fairly recently. Um, so let's say you want to research Black Lives Matter, which we're reading about. And it's a great topic, right, but it's very broad. Okay? It's way too broad for your project in this class. Okay? You're going to need to narrow it down so that you can become a mini expert at the first year student level, okay? There's no way for you to become an expert in the, in everything that is Black Lives Matter, okay? Um, what you wanna do is narrow it down so that you can understand a specific sort of question, right? You can understand a specific portion of that, um, of that topic, that broader topic. So what do I mean by that? Well, here's some examples. Um, broad topics, BLM, Black Lives Matter, right? Police brutality, COVID-19, the spread of COVID-19. Spread of COVID-19 is actually a little bit narrower than COVID-19 in general, okay? Um, police brutality might be a slightly narrower sort of subtopic in the broad topic Black Lives Matter, um, but all of these are still really broad, okay? A narrowed topic will look like this. So instead of just Black Lives Matter, it might be the organizational structure of Black Lives Matter. Okay. It might be how Black Lives Matter uses technology. Okay. Uh, it might be the political work of Black Lives Matter. You know, how does that activist movement intersect with, um, with, with uh, national politics, local politics, and so on? Um, if you're working on police brutality, right, the, a narrow topic for that might be the militarization of the police force or maybe some, are there connections between the militarization of the police force and police brutality, okay? So those are narrowed examples. Same thing with COVID-19. That's a very broad topic, but a narrowed topic that you could potentially work on for if, you, if that were a topic for the class might be age gaps in susceptibility or, um, you know, is social distancing really effective in preventing COVID on college campuses? That's a narrowed topic, okay? So these are some examples to give you a sense of what I'm looking for. Okay. So how do you narrow your topic in general? Okay. You want to ask yourself uh, questions like this. What aspects of the reading uh, I've already done really intrigue me? What did I really respond to? Remember that strong response essay, okay, those hot spots, right? What ideas really intrigued you? Okay. Uh, you might ask yourself what information, what ideas surprised me? Again, think about the strong response assignment. You might also ask yourself what information uh, or ideas in the reading that I, you know, that I saw that I, I really want to learn more about, right? I didn't really feel like I got a good sense of that. They in intrigued me, but I want to learn more about it, okay? So those are some places that you can start. 
But you want to try to be really concrete and specific in answering these questions. And that's where the research um, uh, question will come into play and the work that you do in your argumentative essay. Okay. This will make it easier uh, for the, the research project. It will also make all of your other research projects <laughs> that you're going to do in your life, uh, at least in your time in college, um, uh, stronger. Okay you'll have an easier time with them, okay? So being specific in answering these questions, right, will be really, really helpful to you. Uh, so one of the things I'm gonna ask you to do in this um, broader project is um, generate a research question that's gonna help guide you, okay? This research question should flesh out your narrow topic and it should begin to suggest a thesis statement, okay? So here are some sample research questions for um, topics that might be relevant to our class theme, okay? Here's one. Given the skeptical or even angry responses to Black Lives Matter, what is the movement's future? I wanna, I wanna dive into that, right? Um, Given the local and state laws in Virginia, how difficult is it to prosecute or convict law enforcement officers who use too much force? And so that's a related topic, okay? Um, if I were working on COVID-19, right? What are the important demographics of essential workers and how might that impact susceptibility to COVID-19? Right? Another narrowed research question, what kind of impact do uh, impacts do civilian video recordings and police body cam footage actually have in holding police accountable? I want to know, right? Everybody says this is really important, but is it? <laughs> uh, and so on, okay? So this is what a research question is going to look like for this project. Uh, how do you find sources? Okay. We are going to be locating sources both from the internet Okay. <laughs> uh, and through sort of a special part of the internet, which is library databases, uh, specifically that have like magazines and newspapers, general databases. Okay. Um, so that's how you're going to find the resources. Uh, you can also find sources by um, reading and browsing online just in general. Uh, testing out search terms on Google. Okay. can help you narrow down your topic, can lead you down the road to finding some good sources on the internet or in library databases. Um, once you've identified your narrow topic, then you're going to start doing more deliberate searches using keywords from your research question. So I'll, I'll show you what that means in a sec. Your sources um, should be aimed at an educated uh, but not expert audience. And they have to offer educated, meaty content that's been developed with research or thoughtful, informed perspective, which could be broadly understood. Okay? You don't have to have a degree in neuroscience to understand this article. Okay? <laughs> they should be um, understandable, aimed at um, an educated audience, okay? but not an expert in the field. Okay? Um, they have to offer substantive insight into your narrow topic. Okay? Um, so how do you find those sources? One of the things you wanna think about is the nature of the source that you're looking at. So uh, if you're working on the possible connections between militarization and police brutality, um, a research question might be something like this. And I've bolded the keywords, okay? And these are keywords that I'll be searching for when I uh, move into my research portion. What's the impact of the increasing militarization on local and state police forces, on police practice, especially around vigorous policing, police violence or brutalities or toward civilians? Okay, so that's my research question. Some keywords from that research question are militarization, police, practice, um, brutality, right? Um, and so on. So these are the terms I'm gonna use when I'm doing my searches. Um, you want to look for articles of the length that you've read in class thus far, right? And maybe even a little longer in some cases, definitely not shorter, okay? So length is usually an indication of thought. <laughs> um, you want to look for articles from reliable, reputable, respected, long-standing sources, okay? um, not a, a website that popped up yesterday, okay? uh, not someone who's, who, whose Twitter account um, uh, profile is an egg, okay? Uh, you want to find uh, materials that are um, from 
longstanding sources, reliable sources, reputable sources, and the same thing for the authors, okay? You want to look for well-reasoned and well-supported articles of a fairly recent date, though as we'll discuss, this is a little bit flexible depending on the nature of the source. Um, you want to be sure the articles aren't fake news, that they aren't propagandistic, okay? and they aren't built on or um, persuasive as a result of rhetorical language that seeks to create an emotional charge. Right? Um, you want to look for calm, well-reasoned articles. It's okay. so usually a good hallmark. And you want to be sure that the articles are related to your narrowed topic. Okay. They might take different perspectives on that narrowed topic. Okay. So um, if I am writing about militarization uh, in, in, um, in the police, uh, maybe I would want to find articles that are related um, in this kind of way. Maybe articles that take different perspectives on that topic. Okay, so I might want to try to find an article that takes a skeptical view of that. Right? Maybe someone who's not really sure that militarization has an impact on policing. Okay, um, and that will help me maybe with a counter argument. Uh, I might want to find an article that takes a critical view of that relationship that's like, this is not a good thing. Okay, I might want a little bit more history, right? What's the history of the militarization of police? Um, I might want to find an article that looks at the economic issues associated with police militarization, right? Where are they even getting the money from to do this, right? Uh, and so on. I might want to find an article that looks at that issue from a police person's perspective. Maybe an article that looks at it from the issue of an activist's, from the perspective of an activist's uh, perspective. Um, and so on. You, you get the picture, right? So the different kind of parts of your topic will come into focus as you read more and you become that mini expert, okay? So you're going to find five initial sources and then narrow those down to the three most useful, okay? And you're going to include that in addition to the, the source from our reading that you've chosen, uh, our assigned readings um, that you sort of took as a, a departure point. So this is a, an approximately four page project. It can go over four pages and it might go over four pages given the length of your annotations. Okay? But it should contain um, your research question with your key research terms highlighted. That's not included in the sample I just showed you. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, you're gonna have bibliographic entries and annotations for four sources, okay? one existing source from our class readings and three new sources. Uh, those bibliographic entries and annotations should be in alphabetical order. Um, and beneath each one of those entries, you should have an evaluative annotation of two paragraphs. The first paragraph should summarize the main argument uh, and assess its rhetorical context. And the second paragraph should identify what ideas you find most significant or useful for exploring your research question, maybe a sketch of how and where you might use this in a more formal essay, and so on. Okay, so what is it that intrigues you that, uh, about this essay? What do you really want to get uh, your hands dirty with? Okay, um, maybe think about how it relates to some of the other materials that are in your bibliography. Okay, uh, and how are you thinking right now at this point about maybe using it in an essay? So I want you to kind of think ahead, right? How is this going to be evaluated? It's going to have two major components in the evaluation and one minor component, okay? And it's important for you to know this because even if your uh, summary is spot on and your, um, uh, you know, your sense of the rhetorical context is spot on, your sense of how you might use it is really interesting. If the source itself is not good, then, uh, then that will highly impact the grade, okay? So the first, uh, major component that you're going to be graded on is the quality of the source. Is this a good source? Right? You have to figure that out. Okay? Um, the second thing you're going to be evaluated on is the quality of the discussion, your annotation. Okay? Uh, and then a third kind of minor component of the assessment will be um, oh, formal, right? You're writing, uh, is it formatted correctly? Um, you know, have you used uh, citations? How are the, the bibliographic um, entries correct? Um, and so on, okay? So that's how it's going to be evaluated. Uh, and I hope that this has given you a pretty good 
sense of what the third project is going to be. Right? It should also give you a sense of where the, the, this research process is going. Okay, So I want you to kind of start to think ahead so that the work you're doing in this project is, um, you know, is purposeful. Okay. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions and um, I look forward to seeing what all your research topics are. Okay, thank you.